Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> How does the future look for me? Oh my god. This is becoming a very scary ride. <laughs> I love spaghetti. Hello and welcome to my perfect weekend coming to you from Carnival in Venice. Carnival in Venice is one of the most famous celebrations in the world and a chance for everyone to dress up in elegant costumes. St. Mark's Square is the center of the action. It's also where you'll find the most elaborate outfits. Buongiorno. Hello, beautiful Buongiorno. ladies. Where are, you? where are you from? Spain. Spain. Are you planning on dancing? Yeah, sure. Can Why you not? dance? You want to show me some dance moves? Yeah, of course. <laughs> the costumes put everyone in a festive mood. One of the most important accessories during this time is, of course, a Venetian mask. And I would like to learn more about this tradition. Masks have been a part of carnival celebrations in Venice for centuries. There are a few artisans left who still create them by hand. Time to make a mask. Hello, Hello ciao. Nice, ciao. To meet you. nice to meet you. Giorgio Galasso has been in the mask making business for over 30 years, offering workshops. Why are they worn? How did this tradition start? Uh, the tradition started because uh, the doges want uh, for 15 days every people are the same. Because with the mask on, I can know if you are rich or poor, or if you are uh, a lady or a man, beautiful, not beautiful, just that. So that. no class structure. No class, no class. No Everybody are the same for 15 days. What is a typical mask for this time? What does a typical mask look like for the Venetian carnival? This is the first uh, Venetian mask. Mm -hmm. The name of this mask is Bauta. And uh, is a mask the Venetian people use when they want to be anonymous. I'm anonymous, so I can go to the casino and gamble away all my money. <laughs> so I uh, know the masks in Venice with the long noses. Explain that to me. Uh, this is the most famous mask, but there is no a carnival mask. Is the mask of the doctor of the plague. Mm -hmm. The doctor used this mask because they think the plague is in the air. It's not true, but we're talking about 14th century. And they use like a modern anti-gas mask. Let me try that. <laughs> anti-gas mask. Oh. It's a bit uncomfortable. Hello. Now it's my turn to create a new face. Giorgio guides me with my mask until it's finished. So Giorgio put the final details on my mask. I'll show you to you here. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. And this is my shopping tip for a perfect weekend in Venice. A mask as a souvenir. Navigating these narrow alleyways through Venice can be quite challenging. I think it's this way. Oh no, maybe, I think it might be this way. <laughs> so I'm heading back to the heart of Venice, the St. Mark's Square or Piazza San Marco, where there's a little bit more action this evening and there are lots of restaurants and bars. So I'm going to treat myself to something typically Venetian. A Bellini. Wow. So this is the, our Bellini. It's uh, born in Venice and it's made with uh, Prosecco uh -huh. and uh, fresh uh, peach juice. Beautiful. And this? What this is uh, Carnival uh, Galani and Fritelle. 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 It's made with uh, uveta and uh, pinoli. Okay. okay. Well, that's it. Thank you. Thank Enjoy. You. A Bellini at the Quadri Cafe is my culinary tip. A perfect way to end the day. The second day of my perfect weekend begins with a Venetian must. 
Buongiorno Dante. Buongiorno. Dante Boscolo has been working in Venice as a gondolier for over 35 years. So this is my first gondola ride, and I will say two things stand out. First of all, it's very rocky on this boat. <laughs> it gives a new meaning to the expression, don't rock the boat. Oh my god. <laughs> And the other thing is, I'm astounded at how slowly we're going. I guess I'm used to the water buses or water taxi and zipping along the water. But this is a beautiful way to enjoy the architecture at a really slow pace. Hello, spaghetti. We leisurely make our way down the Grand Canal, but also take in some of the back waterways. Spaghetti and macaroni. Most tourists who come to Venice only know St. Mark's Square or they focus on the Rialto Bridge. And what they don't get to see are these back canals, these quiet waters. And so taking a gondola ride through the back waterways of Venice is a definite must to appreciate the city and see more of the architecture. Including Venice's oldest gondola factory, and this is my activity tip for a perfect weekend in Venice. Back on St. Mark's Square, carnival celebrations are underway with a competition for best costume. There's also another photo-worthy site not far from here. Now I'm walking by the famous Bridge of Sighs, which connects the Doge's Palace with the former prison. Now it's called the Bridge of Sighs because it was it offered the prisoners a last view of the free world before they were put behind bars pretty much for the rest of their lives. My next stop is the famous Hotel Daniele, where I will attend a masked ball. Wow, look at these amazing costumes. These are so impressive. It really makes me wonder what I will be wearing tonight. Before the preparations for the ball begin, I head to the terrace for breathtaking views of Venice and some tasty treats. <laughs> Thank you. All for me. <laughs> so I was told that the terrace at the famous Hotel Daniele offers amazing views of Venice, and that is definitely the case. So I'm treating myself to some carnival food Fritella, but I have to be careful not to eat too much because I have a fitting for tonight's ball, so I want to be able to fit into my dress. <laughs> Fabio Momo is in charge of the ball and helps me find the right dress for the occasion. Here we are in the atelier, shortly before my fitting. I'm with the director, Fabio Momo. Uh, we have these gorgeous dresses here. Let's start with um, the, the tradition of Carnival in Venice. When did, when did Carnival begin here? The Carnival of Venice is one of the oldest of Italy, and it begins so probably in the 12th century, but the first document is 13th century. Since it started, the Carnival of Venice go ahead until the end of the 18th century, till the end of the Venetian Republic. Then it stopped in a few years and starts again 40 years ago in 1980s. And the, the costumes that are worn, like these dresses, um, are these, is this required attire? Do the women have to wear these dresses? The women have to wear these dresses at the balls or, or the parties, mm -hmm. masked parties during the carnival. That's all the balls require, require all right, that. So, so this you is a couldn't enter going to... without a, a, a costume. But in the street, it's much more free. So I think I've chosen this yeah. dress. So yeah. perhaps we can go to my fitting now. Yeah. And a tight fit it is. Whoa. Oh, what's the saying? We have to suffer to be beautiful. Hey. And it was the yes. same in the 18th century. Huh. I 
think I might pass out. <laughs> 18th century fashion was all about elegance and becoming far removed from one's natural appearance. And that included wearing a wig, which completes my transformation into a belle of the ball. Now I'm all dressed and ready to dance. But before the festivities begin, I test my new look on the streets of Venice and draw the attention of several onlookers. Back in the Hotel Danieli, the master of ceremonies begins to receive guests and the dances soon begin. It truly feels like stepping back in time, although I must admit, some of the participants could use some more dance lessons. Two, three, four. Nonetheless, this is my special tip for a perfect weekend. And this wraps up my perfect weekend from Carnival in Venice. Join me again as I explore more exciting European destinations. And until then, it's happy travels. All the ladies, one, three, shoulder.